trust him with everything. I can trust him with my secrets. I can trust him with my weaknesses and he won't tell nobody else. He'll just come alongside me and encourage me. You believe that? Praise the Lord. We're going to go to the, the book of uh, 1 Peter tonight, chapter 5. And it seemed like I thought I, ha- I had a thought, but I began to maybe go to my little office there at the house and study. And it seemed like the Lord brought this to me. So in 1 Peter chapter 5, if you have your Bibles tonight, I'm sure it won't be uh, very long before you tonight, but the Lord wants to, wants to help somebody. I felt that so heavy. I told my wife when I, I left here, I felt so much on my shoulders. I felt there's so many burdens that people, I can look in your eyes and tell what's on your heart. You can look into my eyes if you really had the Lord on you and you can see what's upon my heart. When I look upon those that are heavy, you know what I feel? I feel the heaviness that they got. If we're bought with the price of the high calling, if I've been called by God and you've been called by God, when we come in each other's presence, we can feel that pain. You ain't got to tell me you're hurting. You ain't got to tell me what's going on. I ain't got to tell you what's going on. You can feel it upon my heart tonight, friend. But God wants to help us tonight. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Praise the Lord. In 1 Peter chapter 5, I'm going to read the first maybe seven verses here and see what the Lord has for us. First Peter chapter five. I still don't know how to preach. Do so you pray for me tonight? First Peter chapter five. The Bible says the elders, which are among you, I exhort who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being an example to the flock. And when that chief shepherd shall appear, he shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mind mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. You help me pray one more time that God be able to use me tonight. Father in heaven, I come to you, God. I know I have nothing to give. I'm nothing but an empty vessel tonight, Father. I pray you'd be able to use this, God. Paint the picture you'd have for the church to see tonight. Lord, I know I can't do anything without you. God, I've tried it before. I've failed so many times miserably, just like everybody else. But I pray tonight you'd be able to use this vessel, God, for thy glory in the upbuilding of thy kingdom. I pray, Father, you give me the words to say that the church will be encouraged tonight. God, we'd be able to go another mile with you and not look back as Lot's wife did. I want to keep looking forward, God, where you'd have us to go. Lord, we bow for that one name, and that name will never change. The only name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. That sweet holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you for standing for the reading of God's word tonight. I begin to thank, and the Lord began to reveal to me. Didn't have none of this on my heart when I left here. But it seemed like when I got to the house and I started to study a little bit, the Lord began to reveal to me. And I'd like to ask you, who cares? Who really cares? I begin to think about it. No doubt we in this world that we're in, praise God, if you go to the convenience store, there ain't nobody in there really cares about you. You go to the grocery store, there ain't nobody there really cares about you. Bless God, when you get out of their presence, they ain't thinking no more about you. But can I tell you about one that cares for you tonight? Can I care, tell you about one? He said, cast your care upon me, for I care for you. There ain't nobody cares for you like the Lord. There ain't nobody cares for you like the Son of God that died on the cross, friend. When you leave this building. I dare say there's many that don't think about you no more the rest of the week. But there's one friend. He's sticking closer than a brother. He'll be right there with you in that midnight hour when you're all alone, friend. And maybe you got 20, 30 people around you, but you still feel like you're alone. I'd like to ask you tonight, who really cares for you? Who is it really cares about you? Has anybody cares about your lost husband? Has anybody cares about your lost wife? Has anybody really cares about your children that may be addicted to dope? I'm Tell you there's one tonight, friend, that cares for you. He proved his love as he hung on that cross. I tell you the word care, that's a verb. That shows action. I know there's many people that tell you they care for you. But where are they at when you're in trouble, friend? You can't get a hold of them. They ain't really concerned with you. But bless his holy name tonight. When I look to the one that died on that cross, I see the care in his eyes. Who cares? Who cares? You heard people say that? You start telling them something and they get aggravated. They say, who cares? Who cares? I tell you one that cares for me. He came all the way from glory to die on the rugged cross so that I could go free. He cared for me. Hey, there ain't nobody cares you ain't got money to pay the bills in your house. 
I'm telling you, there's very few people really care about you. Praise God, if you can find one person on this side that cares for you, I believe you got a whole lot. But there ain't many people that really cares about you. They don't care about your children. They don't care about you. They don't care anything about your friend. They don't care if you got money to put gas in the car. They don't care, bless God, if your pastor ain't here. They don't care nothing about you. But praise the Lord. There's one that went to that cross and died for me and proved his love. Hey, they said in, in the book of Mark, it said they, that Jesus told them at the end of the day, and in the evening, I'll put it in my words, he said, let's go on out just a little piece. They cast the boat out just a little piece. It wasn't very long. They said there was other ships around there. You read it, Mark chapter 4. There was other ships out there, and it said that the storms came up. The great winds, the ones you're feeling in your life right now, the winds and the waves that's tossing you to and fro, and it came up, and they went down to him and said, Lord, care us not that we perish. Don't you care for us. You see what we're going through, Lord. Do you not care that we perish? He said, oh, ye of little faith. Oh, ye of little faith. You know how many times I said, Lord, can you hear me? I'm in, the, I'm in this bathroom. When I was sick, I spent many times just laying in the floor. I said, Lord, can you hear me? I sure would like to know you can hear me. Do you still care for me, Lord? And I could start feeling that in my heart. I knew that He cared for me because I was reminded of what He did on that cross. Amen. Have you ever said, Lord, can you hear me? I praise God we was dealing with something yesterday, trying to hurry up and seem like this thing broke and that thing broke. And I thought, Lord, I said it out loud. I said, Lord, can you help me today? If I'd have had any neighbors, they'd have said, that boy's crazy. Praise God. I'm, Lord, can you help me today? I don't mean any disrespect, Lord. I need to know you care for me. Can you stir up my heart and remind me who cares for me? <laughs> can I ask you who cares for you? Who cares? There's a lot of people who don't really care. You know what that care is? That's that love. He said, as I have loved you, love one another. As I have loved you, love one another. If there's something going on in your life and you really want to vent to somebody, ain't nobody cares about your job. They, I'm telling you, there ain't many people cares if you don't like your job. There ain't many, very many people cares if you don't like your boss. There ain't very many people cares if you ain't got tires to put on your car. But there's one that cares for you, friend, and he'll never leave you nor forsake you. I don't know what you've been through, but it's easy to say that when you're up on the mountain. Hey, you ever been up on the mountain? It seemed like for a long time in my walk, I was up on the mountain. And I said, the Lord would never leave me. Look at me. I'm doing really good, ain't I? But bless God, when He allows you to get to the bottom, can you still say you love Him? There's a great brother been calling me and trying to encourage me. And the first thing he says is, do you still love Him? Do you still love Him? And I thought, oh, Lord, Lord, I still love you. I still love you, Lord. I know we're going through trials. I felt it when I left here today, friend. I felt every one of you's trials. I felt so heavy going down the road. And I thought, Lord, who really cares? Who cares? Who cares that they're going through that? And he said, I care. I care for them. He said, casting your care upon me. You know what that means? You've got to first believe that he is a rewarder. He said, casting your care. That means you got a part. That means I got a part. That means when I got something going on, I got to say, Lord, this belongs to you. I can't do anything about it. I told you once before, but I want to tell you again. You know when I started getting better in my health? When I said, Lord, any way you fix it, it's all right with me. The doctors don't know what to do. The medicine ain't helping. This has been four or five months I've been dealing with this. Any way you fix it, Lord, it's all right with me. And when I finally put it in His hands, when I finally casted my care upon Him, I started to see a difference. I started to see a difference. You know when you're going to see a difference in your life? When you really give it to Him. That's hard for me to do, friend. I want to fix it myself. I don't want to call somebody else to fix it. I like to fix it myself. But there's going to come a time in your life you're going to have to say, Lord, I'm giving it back to you. You may be carrying something around tonight. You don't need to be carrying it around. You wasn't built to carry nothing around. We don't, wasn't made like no donkey. I wasn't made to carry stuff around like I try to carry. But my Lord, praise the Lord, He went to that cross carrying my sins and carrying your sin. You know why He did that? Because He cared for you. Who cares for you? If I give you a piece of paper and go to you to write it down, who cares for you? you will take you a minute to think about that. You say, well, I got three children. Well, bless your heart. Did they really care for you? Did they really care a lot about you? And you say, well, I got a mom and daddy. Well, do they really care about you? Who really cares for you? If they care for you, they'll prove it through their actions. When he loved us, he proved it through his actions. If he didn't love us, there would be no proof. But I've got proof. They said there's infallible proofs that he loves you for what he did for you, for the beating he took for you, and the beating he especially took for me. Sometimes I thought, I bet he took an extra smack for me. I bet he took an extra bruise for me. I bet he took an extra whip for me, friend. No! and the man that I was but he still cared for me 
He said, while you were yet in your sins, Christ died for you. You know why? Because He cared for you. He died for you because He cared for you. And where are you at? Have you started writing that down yet? Who cares for you? Have you got your pen out yet? Can you really tell me somebody that cares for you? That's the only one I know about. I love my wife with all my heart, but I don't love her half as much as the Lord loves her, friend. I'd like to tell you tonight, there's one that cares for you. Amen. You may feel like nobody cares, and you probably got it right. You go to the store tomorrow and say, do you care about me? They'll go, well, uh, yeah, sure, give me $2. <laughs> Give me some money. That's what it's about, ain't it? That's what the world said. The more money you give me, boy, the more I love you. That ain't the way this thing works, friend. Praise God. I've got to show the same love towards somebody else that was shown to me. I've got to show the same judgment to somebody else that was shown to me. The same love, the same long-suffering. Oh, 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 Lord. Love and charity, they suffer long, don't they? Did He suffer long for you? He suffered long for me, friend. You know why? Because He really cared for me. How many times... The people tell you they love you, but you don't see no proof of that. It's easy to tell somebody you love them. Love you, brother. Love you, sis. Love you. What's that mean? This world uses that word. They really don't mean it. I'm not very good at math but, or English, but I'll tell you that's a, an action verb as well. That's a verb. That's an action word. If I tell you I love you, but I don't never ask you if you need any help, I can help you do anything. Do I really love you? Hey, he said, you draw nigh to me with your mouth and you honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. Amen. That's what he said, wasn't it? There's many people that would love to deceive you, friend. They'd love to get you to follow after the wrong thing. They really don't care for you, but there's one. He said, care not that we perish, Lord. Has anybody here tonight that's ever thought that? God, did you see this storm coming about? You told me to go this way. I believe he told that ship to go that way. And then they went that way and started to see the winds. Has God ever told you to go somewhere and you thought, Lord, did, you, did I make a wrong turn? I believe you told me to come here. I believe you told me to do this. Why is this storm? What's this storm all about? I heard somebody say one time, if you use the GPS and it tells you how to get somewhere, it may not tell you everywhere there's a wreck. It may not tell you everywhere you're going to have to slow down. It may not tell you everywhere you've got to speed up, friend. But God will always be there with you. He sent His only begotten Son. The Bible says, For God so loved the world, for God so cared for the world, for God so loved the world, same thing, same word. He cared so much for you so that you would have a way of escape out of this old dark black world and be able to make heaven your home, friend. He cares for you. Have you wrote anybody's name down yet? Hey, have you got your pen out of your pocketbook yet? Is there anybody you think really cares about you? I'm telling you, you know what? And I'll be honest with you, and you can love me or tell me never to come back. But a lot of times when I get in myself, I don't love nobody. Amen, Amen brother. I don't love nobody. You know why I'm too concerned with me? I'm too concerned with what's going on in my life. But that ain't where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be about somebody else's business. I'm supposed to be able to help and encourage somebody else. And you know what happens? Every time I get low, I don't care about nobody else. I'm, tell, I'm being honest with you. You can go ahead and say amen or oh, I don't believe he said that. I just went ahead and emptied it out for you. You feel the same way. Sometimes I don't feel like being around people. I don't. I don't feel like being around people. I got enough to deal with my own mind and my own body to have to be around people. But Christ showed me it had been a lot easier if he didn't have to be around people too. Wouldn't it have been a lot easier if he didn't have to go walk around people? Everywhere he went, they tried to get something on him. They said he's a, he's a wine bibber, he's a blasphemer, he goes home with sinners, he does all these things that's against the law. Praise the Lord. And he died for me. <laughs> hey, they told Paul, they said, you polluted the temple by allowing these to come in. Thank God I'm glad that they may think it be polluted, but my heart sure ain't polluted no more. It's clean by his precious blood. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Who cares for you? You got the first letter written down yet? You got the first, do you, I mean, I'd like to think that my children really care for me. I'd really, really like, to th I'd like to think my daddy really cares for me. But I don't know, when it comes down to it, do they really care for you? Hey, do they really care for you? There's very few people that's really going to care for you, but nobody's going to care like the Lord. Can I ask you one more time, who cares? Who cares? When you're there by yourself and you don't think you're going to be able to make it, you say, I ain't been there yet, well, hold on a minute. God will get you there eventually. He'll break you, friend. You say, I've already been broken when I got saved. You'll be broke again if you need to be. I'll be broke again if I need to be to be made in the fashion as he was. He was broken for me, wasn't he? Bruised. Oh, Lord. Bruised for my transgressions. I believe he was beaten beyond recognition. You know why? Because he cared for you. He proved how much he cared for you. Do you care for him? Do you love him? Do you show him action in your love? Hey, if, if a husband and wife says, I love you every night, but they never do anything for one another, do they really love each other? Do they really love each other? Love, and that's a sacrifice, ain't it? It's a giving relationship. I believe I'm married to the Lord tonight. What about you? I'd like to be the bride for Christ, wouldn't you? I'd like to be the one that comes back and receives one day. And praise God, and if I have to go by the grave, I'm still going to be with Him because He cared enough. 
He cared enough to make that door that we was without hope. Aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Without hope, friend. Have you ever felt like you was hopeless? When I look back on my childhood, I had a wonderful mother and father. Please don't get me wrong. A wonderful mother and father. They done, done me perfect. Praise God, didn't take me to church, but done me perfect. But I begin to look and I think, man, what a hopeless case I was. When I look back at myself at 10 years old, I look back, I'm not saying a pity party. I want you to know how real God is. I look at myself and I think, how in the world can God get me to an altar to be able to repent of my sin, to be sorry for my sins? Praise the Lord. And I look back on that and I say, man, that's a hopeless case. You may have been a hopeless case too. Maybe you was raised in the house of God. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. Maybe you wasn't. Maybe your mom and daddy wasn't raised in the house of God, so they didn't take you. But I'm telling you, Christ knew that you was worth dying for. Praise God. He knew that you was worth dying for. I don't know why He died for me, but I'm thankful that He did so that I could make heaven my home and it proved to me that He loved me. Next time somebody says love, you say, do you really? Amen, you catch them off guard. <laughs> do you really love me? Or are you just like saying that? Sounds good to say it, don't it? Amen. Boy, I love you. Uh, see you in six weeks. Love you. Do you really mean it? Do we really mean it when we tell the Lord that we love Him? Do I really do what He wants me to do? Lord, I find myself at the end of this thing full of faults, friend. But I sure would like to make heaven my home and realize that He died for me. Who cares for you? Who cares? Who cares that you're going to go home and you're not going to feel like doing anything? You don't have no appetite no more. You don't feel like reading your Bible no more. Who cares about that? The Lord cares. The Lord cares, friend, when you got depression in your heart. You say, I've never been that way. Well, I hope you don't have to. But there's a lot of people deals with that. There's a lot of people deals with stuff in their mind. I'm telling you, I'm one of them. When the devil tries to get in, he's like a roaring lion. Like a roaring lion. He's not really a lion. He's just really loud inside of there. He'd love to get me discouraged. He'd love to get you discouraged and say, I don't care no more. That's what he wants you to say, ain't it? The devil wants you to say, I just don't care no more. I'm tired. You ever get to that point? You feel like you're going up against the wall. You can't make nothing happen. And you just want to say, I give up. I don't care no more. I've tried too long. I've tried to reach them. I've tried to go to them. I've tried to show them love and they will not receive it. How do you think the Lord felt? When he said he came to his own and his own received him not. Praise God. But as many as received him, to them gave him power. You know what he said? I care for you. How ought would I gather thee as a hen doeth her brood? But you would not. He's saying, I care for you, but you won't care back. You won't care back. Will you, care, will you give him your care tonight? He said, casting all your care upon him. You know what I do many times? I'll give him some of it. But I ain't ready to hand off all of it. Because as soon as I give it to him, I'll go back home and I'll start pondering on it. I'll start sitting there and I'll start thinking about what it was that was bothering my mind. And I really didn't give it to him. I've had to learn that the hard way, Brother Aaron. When you come to God and you tell him you're giving him everything, that means you're giving him everything that's upon your mind. That means you ain't got no more doubt when you leave here. That means you ain't got no more fear when you leave here. That means you believe on him, friend. You're casting all your care upon me. What good is it to give him some of it? You say, well, it got a little bit lighter. Well, it's still heavier than it's supposed to be. It's still heavier than it's supposed to be. But I'd like to come to him tonight and say, Lord, I'm going to cast all my care upon you. I don't understand what you want me to do. I'm confused. Has anybody ever been confused before? Has anybody ever been confused? I can remember we went to the lake one time and, and you know, young boys, we thought we knew everything and we got off the boat dock and it was a little foggy that morning and I said, well, I believe I know where we're going. We went real slow and went around for about an hour and I said, I believe I see where we're going. We went back and got there and I said, my Lord, we're back to where we started from. Then got right back. I thought we knew where we was going, but it was foggy. See, I, I thought within myself, I knew I know this lake good enough. I, I know where this cove's at, where we're going to go fishing. We can just go ahead and get there a little bit early. You may be thinking you're following after the light, praise God, but sometimes we're just going in circles. Sometimes I'm just going in circles. I really ain't getting nothing accomplished because I don't give all of him my care. I'd like to give him all my care tonight, wouldn't you? Praise God, I'm about through. I'd like to give him all my care. He said, casting all your care upon me. For I learned, oh Lord, casting all your care upon me. Have you ever took any of it home with you? You ever left church and took, pretty much took most of it with you? You may have threw it down here, physically speaking. But by the time you got out them doors, you already had it back with you. I'm going to harbor on this all night. Every time I wake up all night, this is what I'm going to be thinking about. I'm going to be thinking about my doubt. I'm going to be thinking about my confusion. I'm going to be thinking about my loneliness. I'm going to be thinking about all these things, Lord. And you know what? He said, I'll keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed upon me. Why? Because you trust in me. And wait, Scott, when we don't have our mind stayed upon him and I got my mind on my problems, that's telling him, Lord, I don't trust you with my problems. Hey, that's hard, ain't it? That, Lord, I don't trust you with my problems. I'm going to handle myself. 
I, I'd rather just handle myself. But if you give it to him, friend, you're telling him, Lord, I trust you to be able to handle these. You say, how can you preach like that? Because I need to hear it tonight, friend. That's exactly how I can preach like that. I need to hear it tonight that I can give him all my care. And I ain't got to be worried about nothing when I wake up in the middle of the night. You ever wake up in the middle of the night and the first thing old devil does is give you something to wrestle with? Think, my Lord, couldn't you wait until morning? I'd sure like to wait till daylight before you give me that. You, know you ain't got to receive it. You don't have to receive that. When the enemy wakes you up at night and tries to put something on your mind, I'm sure he just does that to me. I was talking to a sister the other day and we got to church and I said, how are you, sis? She said, well, I wrestled the devil all the way here. I said, no, you didn't. I said, how do you have time to wrestle you? He wrestled me all the way here. I'm telling you, he loved to wrestle every one of us and get us so confounded when we come into the house that all our mind is on is that problem. Our mind ain't on worshiping the Lord. My mind ain't on giving Him all the glory. My mind ain't in saying, thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. But it's been all my problems, friend. That's the devil wanting you to see that. Now we see through a glass darkly. But one day I'm going to see Him face to face. And all these things are going to be vanished away. I'm not going to have to deal with them anymore. But until that day, I believe He can give us peace. I done told you. He said, I'll keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed up. You say, how can I do that? Meditate on these things. Meditate on these things. The things of Jesus. Not the things of this world. Not the things of the carnal life. We'll never be able to outthink them. You know when I get in trouble? When I try to outthink my problem. I feel like I'm in a rat, like a rat in a cage. I think, well, maybe I can, I can fix it this way. And then I run into something and i got to back up. And I think, well, this looks like an open door. Maybe I'll go here. Back up. But when I ask the Lord, Lord... <laughs> Will you, will you let me follow you out of this cage? Will you let me follow you out of this maze? You ever try to do one of them things when you draw it and you think you got it and you got to back up again? That's how my spiritual walk is most of the time. Praise God, because I'm leaning on my own understanding. He said, lean not upon your own understanding, but lean upon me. Praise God. As we all stand tonight, every head bowed, every eye closed. Sister Joanne, would you like to come to the music tonight? <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Praise God. I'm sure this message was mainly just for me, but thank you for letting me practice on you tonight. Praise God. Thank you for letting me practice on you tonight because I'll tell you, I'd like to be able to cast all my care upon Him. Right now, I ain't got a care in the world. But you know what's going to happen when I put my hand on that door back there? The devil's going to try to give me these things. The devil's going to try to put these things back on you. By the time you get home, you're going to be worried about the same thing you was worried about before you left. That's the way the devil works, ain't it? What, what ifs? Have you ever had the what ifs? The devil loved to beat you down with what if. What if? Well, I remember a man saying one time, that it seemed like the devil come to him and said, what if God don't help you? He said, well, what if he does? What if he does, friend? I'd like to give it back to him, wouldn't you? Praise God, the devil says, what if he don't help you? I'd like to say, what if he does help me? He ain't left me yet, friend. He ain't never going to leave me. He just wants me to cast it all on him. Sometimes he sees I get heavy. I put these weights upon me, friend. But God said, cast all your care upon me, for I careth for you. Can I ask you one more time, who cares? Who is it that really cares in your life? There's one I can point to, and he hung on that cross. He went after that one lost sheep. He said, how many of you having a hundred sheep? If one go astray, will he not leave the ninety and nine and go after that one sheep? Friend, I'm telling you tonight, you may be that one sheep, I may be that one sheep, but he's coming after you, friend. He's coming after you. All you got to do is buy out. We've said it before. If he's going to look for that sheep, I'm going to look for a goat or a cow. I'm going to put my ear and listen. I'm going to listen for that bad. I'm going to listen for that sheep. I'm going to listen for that cow to ball out. Praise God. She may be in trouble tonight. You may be in trouble tonight, friend. And you ain't got to holler loud if you want to. You can. But you ain't got to holler loud. You just got to holler for the Lord. And say, I'm over here, Lord. He's come looking for you. He cares enough for you to leave the 99. He cares enough for you, friend, to leave the 99. Praise the Lord. He cares enough. Who cares for you tonight? I'm telling you, nobody cares like the Lord does. He cares what you're going to be dealing with when you get home. He wants you to give it to Him tonight. This altar's open. I have no idea what's on your heart, friend. But I promise you, the Lord knows. The Lord knows exactly what you've been dealing with today. The Lord knows exactly what Satan's trying to destroy you with. And I wanted to tell you tonight with a pure heart, straight from the throne of God, because He already showed me, Jesus wants you to know He cares for you. He cares for you. He's proved it on that cross. And He sent me here today. When I left here, I didn't have any of this on my mind, any of this on my heart. But as soon as I went and tried to pray and seek His face, He asked me that question, who cares? He said, I want you to tell them I care. I care, praise God, about their family. I care about their lost children. 
I care about that job that's really beating them down. I care that they're wondering if they really can retire or not. I care, praise God, that their children have moved away and they don't call them. I care all these things that beat them down. I care. I care that there's still confusion in their minds. And He wants you to know tonight, friend, if you'll come and bring it to Him at this altar, if you'll come and bring it to Him and you'll leave it with Him, He'll be able to help you with it, friend. I promise you, praise God, He'll help you with it because He's already proved it. He's already proved the love He had for you. Then anybody like to come pray tonight and say, Oh, Lord, I'd like to give this back to you. I've wrestled with it long enough. It's one of them things I started chewing and it got bigger the more I chewed. Felt like I got more in my mouth now than I did when I first took a bite of it, Lord. Would you help me with this? Sometimes this may be nasty, but what's come to my heart? Sometimes you give a young'un something to chew and they chew it and they chew it. Next thing they do, they spit it out. If there's something too big in your mouth tonight, spiritually speaking, and the devil's trying to choke you, I pray you just spit it out. God says you'll spit it out, he'll take it. If you spit it out and leave it alone, God said He'll take it tonight. I'm nothing but worm dirt, friend. But I know my Lord speaks to my heart. And He said, tell them, I care for them. He said, Chestnut Grove, I care for you. I care for you. I proved my love for you when I hung on that cross. Anybody like to come pray tonight before we close? Anybody like to come pray tonight? Praise God. Don't be ashamed to pray. Don't be ashamed of what anybody thinks of you. I promise you, as long as you got that in your heart, you're going to be wrestling with this thing for a long time. But when you can get into your heart that you ain't going to wrestle with it no more, you know what's going to happen to a true body of believers? If you come to this altar and pray and ask God to help you, they're going to be bombarding heaven for you when they're standing at their seat. When they come around you and pray and ask God to help you. I believe that's the way it works, don't you? Praise the Lord. If you got something on your heart tonight and you like to come pray, I believe God said, bring it to me. He said, bring it to me. They said, Lord, there's one. I'm putting my words. He said, there's one. And we tried to cast out the devil. We tried to do these things to him. And his father came to him and said, Lord, why couldn't your disciples do this? (laughs) Praise God. He said, bring him to me. He said, bring him to me. If there's somebody here tonight, God said, you bring it to me. You bring it to him tonight, friend. He'll be able to help you. Just cast that care upon him. I know you raised your hands this morning. And God's seen those hands. And if, praise God, you still got a need, God can still meet those needs tonight. He's proved to you he loves you. Don't have no doubt in him. All the doubt needs to be in man. Ain't nobody really cares. But let me tell you something. Just because they don't care for you don't mean you ain't supposed to care for them. The one that's the cash register that really don't care for you, the one that tried to run you off the road that don't care for you, that's the one you need to love, friend. That's the one that Christ loved. They need to have the love of Christ in their heart. And when they don't love you, you're supposed to love them back. He said, love thy enemies. Oh, Lord. Pray for those that despitefully use you. The Lord wants you to care for them the same way He cared for you. Anybody like to come pray tonight? Anybody like to come pray? Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you once again for allowing me to stand. What an honor it is to stand in this pulpit. I'm not worthy, God, to stand in front of anybody here tonight. I'm the least of the least. When Paul died, I became the chief among sinners. But I pray, God, you'd keep this church. I pray you'd strengthen them, Father. Lord, God, I know you can. I pray you'd remind them once again that you care. Lord, you see exactly what they're going through. And you care for them, God. You said if you just cast that care, if we stop trying to work on it ourselves, God will work on it just fine. If we just leave it alone, friend. If we just take our hands off of it, I believe God will be able to fix it. If you got something in your heart tonight, I pray that God will strengthen you. No doubt every house as I started this service, every home and every